You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Friday, August 9th. In the ongoing investigation regarding the assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump during a campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania on July 13th, the U.S. Department of Justice announced the arrest of Asif Merchant, a 46-year-old Pakistani national, for plotting to assassinate Trump and other officials in a brazen murder-for-hire scheme linked to Iran. FBI Director Christopher Wray stated that Merchant's plant was, quote, straight out of the Iranian playbook, emphasizing national security risk. Attorney General Merrick Garland stressed the Justice Department's commitment to countering such threats. At Chippewa Valley Regional Airport in Euclid, Wisconsin, GOP vice presidential nominee Senator J.D. Vance, Republican from Ohio, approached reporters near Vice President Kamala Harris's Air Force Two. Criticizing Harris for her lack of communication with the press, Vance remarked, quote, I wanted to see if we could look at the plane because hopefully it's going to be my plane in a few months. He poked fun, saying, quote, I thought you guys might get lonely because the vice president doesn't answer questions. Vance blasted Harris for avoiding media questions and accused her of inconsistency on issues like crime and border policy. His remarks went viral, with Vance later tweeting about his surprise visit to check out my new plane. Both were in Euclid for competing campaign events. Hundreds of Christian investors, activists, and professionals, including Inspire Investing CEO Robert Netsley, American Family Association's Walter Wildman, and Guidestone Financial Resources' Will Loflen, have urged major U.S. retailers, Costco, Walmart, Kroger, McKeeson, and Albertsons, not to sell mifeprestin, a chemical abortion drug. Signed by over 400 investors who control substantial stock in these companies, the letters argue that selling mifeprestone could lead to legal and reputational risks. The letters counter a push from New York City comptroller Brad Lander and Democratic House members advocating for the drug's distribution. The FDA recently allowed retail pharmacies to dispense mifeprestin, but the investors emphasized its severe side effects and legal challenges. Despite this, CVS and Walgreens have begun selling the drug in select states. In a harrowing incident in Pakistan, a Muslim mob in Kathor village, Punjab province, attacked a Christian woman named Saima Masih after she was accused of blasphemy by Muhammad Haider. Attorney Akmal Bhatti, chairman of the Minorities Alliance Pakistan, reported that the mob, enraged by allegations of Quran desecration, nearly lynched the 32-year-old mother of two before the police intervened. Bhatti criticized the blasphemy laws, stating, quote, The police saved Saima's life, but registered a blasphemy case against her under the pressure of the mob, which is very unfair. He emphasized the systemic issue, noting the government's failure to protect religious minorities, saying, quote, Christians in Punjab are increasingly being targeted through blasphemy accusations, yet our state is not bothered at all. Border security, the economy, abortion, parental rights, the role of government. These are just some of the issues American voters are talking about heading into the 2024 election. As more Americans than ever before are expected to cast their ballot this November, The church is asking a much deeper question. What exactly does it mean to be a Christian voter in 2024? The Christian Post is proud to present Politics in the Pews at Fellowship Church in Grapevine, Texas, with leading evangelical voices from both sides of the political aisle. With just weeks to go before voters head to the polls, panelists from across the political spectrum will take the pulse of the church to help understand why this election really might be the most consequential in a generation and what specifically is at stake for both the church and the country at large. They'll also look at the Trump factor and the red herring of Christian nationalism along with a roundtable discussion with leading Christian voices on the state of religious liberty in America in 2024 and beyond. For more information, visit politicsinthepews.com. A recent LifeWay research survey revealed that 58% of U.S. Protestant pastors worked 10 years or fewer in non-ministry jobs before entering the clergy, with 34% spending five years or less and 13% less than one year. Conversely, 42% worked more than a decade in non-ministry roles. 
LifeWay's Executive Director Scott McConnell noted, quote, years of work experience in non-ministry roles can help pastors relate to their congregations. The survey, conducted from August 29 to September 20, 2023, had a 3.2% margin of error. It also found that white pastors are more likely than black pastors to have brief non-ministry work experience. Additionally, many senior pastors began as youth ministers or associates. The report arrives as studies indicate clergy dissatisfaction, with Barna Group highlighting a significant decline in vocational satisfaction among pastors. In a significant legal resolution, Texas has paid over $358,000 following a lengthy litigation concerning the censorship of a secular nativity display by the Freedom From Religion Foundation at the state capitol. The controversy began in December 2015 when Governor Greg Abbott ordered the removal of the display featuring Founding Fathers and the Statue of Liberty standing over the Bill of Rights, deeming it a juvenile parody that mocked Christianity. Following court battles, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit ruled unanimously that Texas violated the First Amendment by excluding the exhibit. Annie Lori Gaylor, FFRF co-president, expressed relief at the lawsuit's conclusion but criticized the unnecessary legal expenses. Former Denver Broncos linebacker Randy Gratishar was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame on August 3rd in Canton, Ohio. During his emotional acceptance speech, the 72-year-old dedicated his induction to his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, attributing his faith as the cornerstone of his life. Gratishar recalled a pivotal moment at age 22 when he accepted the gospel during a Fellowship of Christian Athletes meeting, thanks to an invitation from former Ohio State teammate Archie Griffin. He shared the four simple truths of salvation with the audience, emphasizing Romans 3.23 and John 3.16, and expressed gratitude for prayer warriors in his life, including his wife Beth. Gratishar's NFL career, spanning from 1974 to 1983, boasts an unofficial 2,049 career tackles, the most in Broncos history. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Cast. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post daily podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post daily podcast. <laughs>